Hi there, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create some of these impact sounds similar to the ones found in the game Atlas Fallen. I actually designed these sounds from scratch, so I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how I designed those. So I'll make sure to have chapters down below. So if you wanna check it out and skip ahead to any section that you wanna see, you can go ahead and do that. And if not, then let's just start right at the beginning into our project. All right, so to create these impact sounds, what I want to do is get some sort of kick, some sort of slapping punch uh, impact kind of sound. So what I decided to do is start with the traditional uh, kicks sound. So what I did is I loaded a passion face plant here and it's a really simple patch. I just had it on a sine wave here. I brought down the pitch uh, down two octaves and then you can see here the envelope is really short. After that, all I did here is I went to envelope LFO number two, sorry, and I made sure it was in envelope mode and I played around with the time here and I assigned this to the uh, pitch so that it basically goes down in pitch really, really fast. So if I play it now, right, you have your standard, your typical kick drum. So this was a good start. I also added some noise in here, right? And I played around with different kinds of noise to get different variations. Right, so play around with that. But then what I wanted to do is I wanted to export a whole bunch of them. I didn't want them all to sound the same. So what I did is I added thermal. And on here, basically what I was doing is I had, uh, I was going around and choosing different presets. So if I just play it here. Right, you can get some different sounds here. Right, that's a cool one. That's a really nice one. And I just added a little clipper here. At the end, you can see the threshold is down at negative 6.7, ceilings at around negative one. And that's pretty much it. I think the limiter here is just to make sure I don't peak, um, but that's it. So, right, once I had that, it's just a matter of like playing it. I grabbed it. I would put it down here on my track and you can see it here, I already exported a whole bunch of them, but this was my process of doing it. And after that, once I had a whole bunch already sampled out, I went back into here, back into my original track here. And on my channel here, I added another instance of faceplant, sorry, another instance of thermal. And again, I did the same thing here where I would just go through and try out different presets and see what they sounded like together. Right, so you can get a lot of really cool sounds just by using this. Now, of course, if you don't have thermal, don't worry about it. You can uh, do the same thing with other distortion plugins or multi-effects plugins and just play around with that until you can uh, basically export a whole bunch of different kick sounds that you have here. Right, so once I had a whole bunch of these sampled out, layered out, I exported them, put them all into a folder, and then I went to my second step. All right, so for step number two here, what I did is I loaded Reactor. And in Reactor here, I loaded Ultra Loop. If you don't have Ultra Loop, there are alternatives out there such as Loop Mix by Audio Modern. I don't actually have it, but I'm pretty sure it does something similar, if not the exact same thing as what Ultra Loop does here inside of Reactor. So what this is here is I can basically import all of the sounds that I exported in my project. So that's what I did. I had them all imported into uh, Ultra Loop here. And then basically what it's gonna do is gonna choose a different sample at every beat here on this grid. So if I just play it just to show you really quickly. Right, and of course you can randomize a lot of parameters, which is what I did. So if I just randomize it here, I wanna randomize everything. Right, and that's what I did here. You can see I exported a, quite a few of these. And one of the things that I found worked really well is when I do do that, I should also mention here at the top before we go on is that I actually had a few plugins here like Substance, Disperser, um, I put another instance of thermal on here, just a different preset, just to really crunch it up even more. And again, another clipper here. So really emphasizing that low end, the bass, and then um, a lot of clipping just to really punch it out, make it really punchy and crunchy, right? So after that, uh, like I was saying before, one of the things that worked really well when I was playing this is playing with the playback rate here, down here. So if I play it and I bring it down, Right, you can hear you can get a lot of really cool sounds that way. So that's what I did. Exported those out, uh, put it down here. I exported them out into a folder so that I could re-import them later for step number three. Uh, just a few settings here that I'll kind of quickly go over here. Is one is that punch I had all the way up. It just adds extra transient. I think it's like a transient designer. So it just adds more transient to your sound. The decay here, I shortened it a little bit. You don't have to play around with this, but uh, it's nice to play around with it if you want like snappier sounds. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So after that, it was just a matter of randomizing like I showed and then exporting them out. All right, so once I had those files exported out into a folder, I was ready for step number three. And here is the part where I imported them back into my session here into Faceplant. 
And uh, once they were inside here, inside a faceplant, I could just easily grab my offset here and I can just scan through the file here and play on my keyboard, up and down my keyboard to get different variations of different sound combinations. Yeah, that's pretty much it. After that, I just added some transient shaper recenter infiltrator here. I think it's just adding. Uh, yeah, so here on infiltrator, I added a distortion just to add uh, some some snaps, some transient right at the at the beginning of the sound. So if I take this off, let me just show you really quickly here. All right, so there's there's one sound that could work. Now what distortion here is doing, it's just adding some distortion just at the transient point. Right, you can hear it just adds that brightness and it's just a bit of punch right at the transient. It just makes it feel a bit more um, punchy. After that, just a bit of OTT and that's pretty much it here. So yeah, just scanning through the file here. Right, and I just exported, again, I exported a whole bunch of these newly designed sounds here, put them all down here. Again, I exported all of these sounds into a, another folder and that's what I used to create my redesign. So now, why don't we go over the redesign so we can see how I actually use them in the context of the, the game here, of the redesign. All right, so for the redesign here, it's relatively simple in the way that I used the sounds. There weren't too many sounds that I actually used or layered together. Um, so let's just go over these. So there's two wishes for both of these swings here. So let's have a look at these. And they're pretty quiet. And I was, I was kind of trying to imitate the game. Uh, so if you have a listen to the original over here. Right, the swings are really, really uh, low in the mix. They're not, they're not brought out at all. They're really kind of subtle. And what's more important is like the punch, the impact, the hit, and then of course the creature sound. So that's what I, what I was also trying to do in this context um, with just sound effects. It kind of doesn't sound quite the same, uh, especially when there's no music and stuff like that, but it kind of works. So let's have a listen. Right, so that's what these sounds here are. And there's kind of two swing sounds. You have one high one and one low one. Right, so the low is um, supposed to lead right into the impact just to make it feel a lot more punchy. Uh, so that's the whole point of this low one. And I did the same thing here with the second one. Right, they're just two different variations of the same one. These were swings that I took from my melee weapons pack and I just dragged them and dropped them in, into here. And um, just a few things that I did here for the low swing here, I tweaked uh, the EQ a little bit because there was too much high and content in the sound and I didn't want any of that. I really want to be really focused on the lows so that as soon as the hit comes, then you, you have all the highs really pop out and it's just, it feels a lot more impactful. So that's why I did that there. Same thing here, did the exact same thing. All right, now for the impact, these are the sounds um, that we just created in our session. So let's have a listen here. Right, and actually if I have a bring this sound out over here, this was the actual sound. So this sound is cool, it's good, it works, except there was a lot of like transient points. There's a lot of like clickiness. It wasn't just like one hit. It sounded like there was like two or three hits. So what I did here is I could find exactly where that second hit was, which I could see here by the waveform was around here. So I just cut that in here and then I brought it into faded in. So it feels just like one hit, right? Instead of like two or three like duh, 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 hits like that. After that, it's just a matter of kind of tweaking it a little bit. Here the highs, I just, taming them a little bit. Uh, really, I was using Soothe to really tame the highs. So if we actually take these off here, I'm just gonna take off all the processing and we just have a listen to just this sound. Right, there's a lot of that high end. If I use it with Soothe now. Right, it's a lot more mids and, and bass focus, which is what I wanted. I didn't want too much, too much of the highs in there. And then after that, it's just a matter of adding Clipper here just to really beef it up. All right, and I did a similar thing down here except I have an extra layer to add some more variation and also because this second impact is, is uh, bigger and crunchier. So let's have a listen to this one here. All right, so I probably have the exact same settings on this. Yeah, these are the exact same things. I just dragged it down and copied them onto this sound. And then after that, it was a matter of adding an extra sound here. And this is from my magic sound pack. I just, I was looking for a crunchy sound just to add variation to the uh, to the second impact here. All right, because I, I want it to feel like bone crunching. So that's what this is doing here. So that's what that sound is. So together with the other impact here, we have this. All right, so it just feels like it's really crunchy. And now if we put it all together here, 
right? And that's it. This, this, that was the main core part of the redesign. A few things I added here. I had a bit of a reverb that I sent my swings into. Uh, you'll notice here that uh, I'm actually, I brought down the volume quite a bit going to the reverb because I really wanted to just kind of be felt in the space. I don't want the space to be too loud. And then after that, it's just a matter of adding some animal sounds. These are from my monster pack too. So let's have a quick listen to these here. Right, didn't do too much processing on here. If we look, I have some manipulator just to bring it, uh, the harmonics up a little bit. And then again, the highs here in Spectre because I felt they were quite low and they were getting lost in the mix. So if we listen, right, it sounds okay, but there were, because there's a lot more mids focused I, and I want them to be more high focused so we can actually hear it cut through uh, the mid heavy and, and bass heavy impacts. That's why I did um, this here. All right, so a lot brighter, and then I'm putting it through, again, the same reverb here. For this one, I just put the reverb right on the track instead of sending it up there. No reason for that, but just the way I had done it. But yeah, that this is how I created this redesign and these impact sounds. All right, so I hope you found that video useful and valuable. If you want to see another one about creating melee weapons, I'll make sure to put it up on the screen here right now. And that's it for now. If you have any comments, questions, leave it down below. I always read them and do my best to answer them. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.